If you want to support the channel on Patreon and other forms of social media, links are in the description below. Degeneration starts out like any other night. We're 30 years into the future, at least we were when the game was released, and the world's gone all cyberpunk, with dominant corporations laying fat in all-encompassing arcologies, experimenting and creating who knows what on the inside. Not that this should concern you, a lowly courier. Even though you can travel by jetpack from one end of the world to the other in a matter of hours, across exotic locales and irradiated deserts, that, that's all you are. A delivery boy. One can only assume that deliveries operations have significantly expanded in the past couple of years. You have an important package to deliver to the boss of Ginoc after all, and for all you know it could simply be his lunch. All you know is that his name is Jean-Paul Derrida, a classic example of a compound name based on two philosophers if ever there was one, and whatever's inside the box, he wants it urgently. Not that this matters when you park yourself on the 80th floor, and as the doors shut behind you, you see a problem. The dead. Everywhere. Bioweapons crawling around, those who survived desperately trying to hide. And now you two are trapped in this mess with nowhere to go but up, nothing pulling you forward except the need to complete your mission and deliver the package, and nothing but your wits to help you along. That's Degeneration, a 1991 game for the Amiga, Atari ST and DOS from Mindscape, a cold late to the party opening that sets you up for what is one of the most underrated cyberpunk experiences in gaming. The lineage of Degeneration is pretty interesting to examine first off. In many ways it's one of the last of the great arcade adventures, a mostly isometric genre that you're probably familiar with if you've spent enough time with microcomputers, you know, Night Law, Alienate, Head Over Heels and all that lot. The game's creator, Vida Hublinka Cook, previously worked as one of the models for Jordan Mechner on Prince of Persia, which is funny as you can see a bit of influence from that game too. There's ten floors filled with different puzzles to encounter, and aside from your wits the only other thing you possess to begin with is a weapon, a laser which you find quickly enough. The game is pretty strong on both puzzling and action. While you'll need to explore a lot to open doors in other areas, or find the right angles to shoot a switch from a distance, sometimes you'll just need to blast your way through a room in order to secure it. You're going to need all of this and more, because degeneration is a pretty severe challenge. You have a few different enemies to deal with, and although most of them die pretty quickly, the ones that disguise themselves as humans and suddenly decapitate you can be quite terrifying. And all the while you have to take care of the many traps, electrified floors, mines, turrets, plasma barriers. Any combination of these can end you sharpish if you're not constantly paying attention, and while you can always continue from the start of a floor, you start the game with 5 lives only, and you only continue with the amount of lives you had at a floor's beginning. You really don't want to be trying to take on the later floors with just one life. There are certain things that can help you, from later items such as clocks and your own plasma barriers, and the all-important grenade, which you can use to blow up a door and get out of a room if you're really stuck. Of course, you do have to weigh that up with the possibility of needing it for a particularly tough enemy or fiendish turret later on. Fortunately, you can rescue survivors pretty frequently, and considering that every survivor gives you an extra life, it's utterly worth doing. Survivors also allow you to explore the game's lore, and try to figure out just why you were brought here on such an urgent mission, and to figure out just what the hell happened. Degeneration is quite a fast paced game, and you can indeed blitz through it if you choose, but it's worth actually questioning survivors before leading them out of a room. In any case, you should rescue them no matter what, just for the lives, which makes it quite painful when a stray laser shot accidentally turns them into dust. Degeneration does give you a fair amount of tools to help you on your way, but you would do well not to misuse them. Which isn't to say that this game is particularly fair. You will die, and you will die a lot. There will be several times, such as the aforementioned moment when you first encounter a C-Generation disguised bioweapon, where you will almost certainly die. And seeing as that's right at the end of a floor, that happening when you only have one life left can be well, rather frustrating to say the least. The sort of thing you expect really, 
An unforgiving game that won't hesitate to treat you like the pathetic, human little delivery boy you are. While you may only be fighting balls and cylinders for a lot of the time, even they can do horrible things to you if you let them. The game's four enemies, while simplistic, do have a certain progression to them, from the utterly embryonic, to the slightly more proportionate, to the proportionate but still mindless, and ultimately to the singular, perfect specimen that gives the game its name. You don't find out just how dangerous degeneration is until right at the end, but needless to say that Derrida managed to achieve what he set out to do, to the point where he was unable to control it any further. It's this progression, and this sense of how grave the task ahead of you is that makes the game worth sticking with, curiosity and sheer bloody-mindedness. Degeneration does a great job at putting you in the shoes of its unnamed courier. You may have some skills and some wits, but you're always vulnerable. And the task at hand is always there. That package is always in your inventory, for the eyes of Derrida only. At no point does the courier think that, hmm, what would happen if they opened it? Your job is to deliver the package, and damn these fatal obstacles and ruthless fire weapons, you're going to deliver this package no matter what. Your job sure as hell depends on it, if nothing else. So, you know, you could say that degeneration is an almost 30 years too early satire and critique of the current gig economy that millennials live in today. Or, you could just say that it's a bloody good game that deserves a fair bit more recognition than it often gets. It's such a shame that, for so long, Degeneration has gone virtually unrecognised as one of the best cyberpunk games going. It's short and fast-paced enough to be pretty close to my absolute favourites in the genre, the likes of Syndicate and Shadow One. The atmosphere, that intense humming of evil, the almost innocuous officers and the secrets they hide which will utterly ruin you, and a lowly delivery boy that ends up facing this almost ridiculous opposition that, if allowed to escape, will destroy humanity. What's not to love? A fantastic game by any measure, and one that I really think you should fire up on an emulator like, right now. That does it for the main computer version anyway. This is what you got on the Amiga, the ST, and in DOS. It is a shame it didn't get a port to the Mega Drive or SNES, really. The game would have fitted quite well on there, I reckon, and it certainly would have been better than some of the god-awful ports from the Mega that those consoles did get. However, it did find its way to one console, and you get no prizes for guessing that it was on the Amiga CD32. Normally, CD32 ports aren't worth covering because they're exactly the same as the Amiga originals. And yep, that's pretty much the case here. The ISO for this game literally features nothing but an 880k disc image, and it's the same as the original. Degeneration was three years old by this point, and while it's perhaps nice for the game to get a port, well it's not really a port is it? And obviously it didn't do anything to reverse the CD32's fortunes. You wonder why the system was a failure, and then you see that most of the games, like Degeneration, were already years old and hadn't been upgraded. Oh, and while we're here, well, there is also an HD remake that you can get on Steam, and has also recently been made available on Switch. Yeah, I think that Degeneration is certainly worth remaking as a way of getting the game out to more people, but this isn't a good job. The graphics are incredibly poor even for a low-level indie title, and the animation is even worse. When you see things like the explosions from killing a bioweapon, you wonder if the game's really finished not to mention a fair few other more critical bugs that hamper the title. There's none of the charm or atmosphere of the original to this, unfortunately. A shame, and it seems as though very few people indeed bothered with this remake. I certainly wouldn't recommend spending a 10 on it, stick with the original because it's a hell of a lot better. It's 2018 now, and believe it or not, we're only three years away from the year that this game was set in. Unfortunately, we don't have jetpacks that can take us across continents in mere hours yet, although no doubt Elon Musk is working on something and giving it a go. But still, the closeness of the date is more reason than ever to play this classic, hidden computer gem. Bye for now! The community gives thanks to the following. Adam Schaefer, Alex Stoko, Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt. Audi Sawley, Conformist, Daniel Briggs, Daniel David Taylor, Dustin Cooper, Gary Pinkett, George Newton, Ghostly Spectre, Gwatham Blackpore, Hunter, Ian Roberts, James Itt, 
James Loveridge, Jason Durso, Jason Goy, Jason Leach, Jason Stevens, Johan Eriksson, Josh Jensen, Lee Norris, Mark Johnston, Martin Pataki, Morton Scanin, Lanette McCrone, Nicholas Tristan, Olaf Albin, Peter Jack, Peter Sidorn, Phil Taprog, Pocky Southmaid, Rachel Maxwell, Romeo, Ryan Burford, Sammy Lee, Samuel Victor, Scott Coulter, Sean Zoltek, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Stephen Warner, Leon Natural, Tanyo Jay, Yoko Operator, and Zach Roach.